the geysers and hot springs in Yellowstone Park are a sign of intense heat somewhere below the surface. The heat and tremendous pressures found deep within the earth are natural agents in a process called metamorphism. Because metamorphism occurs far underground, we can't witness the actual changes taking place. But by studying metamorphic rocks on the surface, geologists have learned a great deal about how they form. During the production of metamorphic rock, pressure from overlying rock or mountain building causes physical changes in the appearance and structure of the rock. Great heat from within the earth or intruding magma causes chemical changes and the formation of new minerals. The metamorphic process begins by acting on an existing rock. These formations in Utah were carved out of solid rock by wind and water. But they began millions of years ago as countless grains of sand, perhaps along a beach. Or they might have been dunes, where the wind formed giant hills of sand. In either case, as the sand piled up layer by layer, the weight increased until the grains were cemented together, forming sandstone. The metamorphic process began in places where the sandstone was buried under several thousand meters of overlying rock. As the depth became greater, the pressure increased and the temperature rose until individual grains fused themselves into one another, forming the metamorphic rock called quartzite. So an ancient sand dune or beach may stand today high above sea level as a cliff of metamorphic rock. Another kind of rock had its beginnings in ancient seas where layer upon layer of shells accumulated on the ocean floor. Eventually, the shells were cemented together to form limestone. As millions of years passed, the great weight of overlying material caused the lime in the original shells to change to a new crystalline form called marble. This marble slab gives a silent hint of its origin, for we can still see the shape of some shells preserved in the rock. This metamorphic rock, called slate, formed in the bottom of a mud flat where pressure from overlying sediment gradually squeezed out most of the water. The tiny mud flakes lined up parallel to one another so that today the rock breaks into hard, flat sheets. Slate has a characteristic ring when struck with a hammer and because the large slabs cleave into flat blocks, it is widely used as a building material. The heat from lava flowing over older rocks changes them in a process called contact metamorphism. You can see the changes here as a zone of metamorphosed rock between the massive lava flow above and the earth beneath. Contact metamorphism also occurs along the edges of dikes. On both sides of this light-colored dike, 
Zones of black and purple rock formed when the hot intruding magma baked the surrounding red shales, causing some of the minerals to change. The folding and squeezing of entire mountain ranges or the intrusion of large bodies of molten rock cause large scale changes over a wide area. This process is called regional metamorphism. Dr. Bill Spence invited us to join him to examine an area of regional metamorphism in the Piedmont of North Carolina. During the day, we would travel over several counties to see the different kinds of metamorphic rock that were produced by one batholith millions of years ago. The batholith, colored in red on our map, was originally a mass of molten rock. Deeply buried layers of mud, shale, and gravel surrounding it were metamorphosed by the heat and pressure of uplift as magma intruded into them. We started where little change had occurred and then looked for increasing change as we moved closer to the batholith. Here, more than 50 kilometers from the source of heat, the remains of a mud flat were only slightly metamorphosed into a shale. It still showed flat beds and crumbled easily. But at the next site, a few kilometers closer, the beds were dipping more steeply, and the shales had changed to slate, indicating more uplift had occurred. Clays have been recrystallized to very fine grain micas, and most of the water's been driven out. Rings real well. Real. Seems to be a whole lot harder than a, than a rock at the last outcrop. Certainly is. I couldn't break this one. Another few kilometers brought us to a zone where the clay minerals began changing to mica, forming a new kind of rock called a phyllite. The thousands of tiny mica flakes sliding against one another give this rock a soapy feel and a crumbly texture. About 20 kilometers from the batholith, we looked at a mica schist with larger mica flakes and a new mineral called garnet. You can see the garnets in here and you can also see these very fine layers or foliation running this way in the rock. Slightly different conditions had existed farther down the creek. The original sediments had contained more sand and less clay. The rock we found here was called a gneiss. Bands of quartz, feldspar, and mica ran through the rock, but the grains were interlocked more tightly than in the schist, and it was much harder to break. After lunch, we traveled another few kilometers and crossed into the next zone on our map. There, the heat had been much greater, and we found another new mineral called kyanite. Kyanite grows in long, thin blades with a bluish color. In this rock, the crystals were almost five centimeters long. Throughout the rock, there were many large garnets interwoven with mica flakes and masses of quartz. We could still see flat layers or beds in these rocks, but at the next outcrop, there were signs everywhere that the rocks had very nearly melted. The beds of quartz and mica had flowed over one another like taffy. Bill called the rock a migmatite. We were close enough now to the batholith that a short walk brought us to the edge of the igneous rock. Here, 
Here we could see large chunks of dark metamorphic rock surrounded by the lighter granite. Bill explained that the pieces of metamorphosed rock broke off and sank into the granite while it was still molten. There were signs of contact metamorphism around the rims of some of the chunks. During the day, we had traveled about 75 kilometers and looked at many kinds of metamorphic rock, all changed by the intrusion of one mass of molten igneous rock millions of years ago. Metamorphism is still going on around the world. In areas where molten rock beneath the surface is slowly changing the surrounding rock into new forms. It is a continuing process as the earth constantly shuffles and reshapes the materials in its crust. <laughs>